Welcome to new episode of Space Science series. Today's episode is stars. In this episode, we are going to understand what are the stars, how they take birth and different phases of their life. At dark night, if we look at the sky, we see stars scattered everywhere across the sky. What are the stars actually? They are huge spheres of hot gases held together by their own gravity. Estimated stars in the universe till date are 3 into 10 raised to 23. Only 6 to 10 thousands of them are visible by naked eyes. They are at different distances from us as well as they are of different sizes, temperatures, colors and brightness. Star takes birth inside hydrogen dust clouds called nebula. Thousands of years it takes to contract and form a dense core. Because of huge density of core, its pressure and temperature rising so high. This phase of generation of star is called as T Tauri phase. Millions of years later, when temperature becomes about 15 million degrees Celsius, nuclear fusion begins to set a longest phase of star's life called main sequence. Let's see why stars have different brightness and colors. Stars are hot, dense spheres of hydrogen and helium gas. The light and heat they produce because of nuclear chain fusion reaction. Two hydrogen atoms are fusing together to produce one helium atom and giving off tremendous amount of energy. The nuclear fusion occurs at the core of the star. The amount of heat and light produced is depend on how much fuel they have. Faster the rate of fusion, brighter the star. Denser the core, that means massive the star, higher will be the rate of fusion and brighter will be the star. Stars have atmosphere too. The gases present in their atmosphere outside the core absorbs light produced in core and gives at specific wavelength depending upon elements of gases in atmosphere. Because of that, continuous spectrum of light has gaps in it. German physicist Max Planck proved that stars give off light of different colors based on their temperature. Hotter star gives blue line spectrum while cooler star gives red color light. Cecilia Pengaposchkin proved that color of the light comes out from a star is dependent on both the things, temperature as well as element of the star's atmosphere. Even if stars like sun are giving green color spectrum more than any other color, but our eyes see mixed colors together as white. Some light of shorter wavelength like purple, blue and green get scattered away by nitrogen molecules from Earth's atmosphere. Sunset looks orange or red because very thick layer of atmosphere is there between our eyes and sun at the horizon. So all blue light scattered away and we see sky and sun red or orange. Star's classification system given by Canon and Pen-Kaposchkin is still used today. According to the temperature, stars are classified assigning letters from O to Y. Hottest stars are of type O, slightly cooler stars are of type B and followed by A, F, G, K and M. Each group divides into 10 subgroups like G group is divided into subgroups G1, G2 up to G10. In past few decades, even cooler stars are discovered. They are assigned letters L, T and Y. Y type of stars has minimum temperature. Our sun has surface temperature 5500 degrees Celsius and it is G2 type of star. The brightest star we look in the night sky is Sirius, which is A0 type of star. Two things are very necessary to know about any star. Those are temperature of the star and its distance from us. By knowing these two things, we can measure its size. Also, how much amount of energy that star is giving off, nothing but luminosity can be calculated easily. In 1910, Eigener Hertzsprung and Henry Russell created one diagram which was a major step towards stellar evolution. The diagram known as HR diagram which shows relationship between star's magnitude or luminosity versus effective surface temperature. More simply to say, brightness versus temperature. Every star can be plotted on this type. 
sun is plotted on this diagram with luminosity equals to 1 and surface temperature equals to 5500 degrees Celsius. The most prominent region is diagonal, going from upper left hot and bright stars to lower right cooler and less bright stars, called as main sequence. In lower left, stars are hot and blue, but very faint, that's why they must be dwarfs. Above the main sequence, there are giant stars and at upper right region, there are stars which are cooler but still bright, that's why they must be supergiants. The smallest star found in universe is OGLETR 122p, which is a red dwarf having diameter only 0.12 times the sun diameter. The biggest star found in the universe is UI Scuti, which is a red supergiant having diameter 1708 times the sun diameter. Stability of main sequence stars for billions of years is because of balance of two forces acting in opposite direction to each other. One is gravity which acts towards the core and the force because of tremendous pressure of gases inside core acts away from core opposite to gravity. What happens with stars when their fuel come to an end? Fusion reaction stops with the end of hydrogen in the core. But because of higher temperature, it continues to emit energy into the space. As fuel has been ended already and energy emission is continued, temperature of star begin decreasing. As nuclear fusion has stopped, pressure of gases inside core starts reducing. Gravitational force dominates this opposing force and star begins contracting. Its pressure and temperature start to increase. If this temperature goes beyond the temperature requirement of helium fusion reaction, then the core starts nuclear fusion again. Helium is converted into carbon and oxygen by giving out tremendous amount of energy which is even more than hydrogen fusion reaction. This effect further expansion of star, star becomes bigger as compared to its previous size. In expanded condition, star becomes stable. Again, it begins contracting when helium fuel ends and new cycle begin in which carbon fuses into neon and magnesium. Again, star expands. Its surface temperature becomes low and as low temperature sources emits red light, it looks as red and huge, so named as red supergiant. In fact, each star doesn't become red supergiant. What will be its future after hydrogen fuel ends is depend on the mass of star. If the mass of star is less than 0.008 times the mass of sun, then it remains brown dwarf. If mass of star is in between 0.008 and 8 times the mass of sun, then it becomes white dwarf. If mass of star is in between 8 and 25 times the mass of sun, then it becomes neutron star. And if mass of star is about 25 times the mass of sun, then it becomes black hole. That's all for this episode. If you have anything to ask, please comment below. Thanks for watching.